everyone, Sarah here, back with another Paint With Me video. Today, I'm using a gifted bouquet of yellow roses as inspiration for my watercolor galaxy flowers as I read another excerpt from Louisa May Alcott's short story collection, Flower Fables. If you're interested in learning more about Flower Fables or Louisa May Alcott, I've linked my first Paint With Me video up in the cards. You can also check out additional reading suggestions in the description below. Flower Fables by Louisa May Alcott The summer moon shone brightly down upon the sleeping earth, while far away from mortal eyes danced the fairy folk. Fireflies hung in bright clusters on the dewy leaves that waved in the cool night wind, and the flowers stood gazing in very wonder at the little elves, who lay among the fern leaves, swung in the vine boughs, sailed on the lake in lily cups, or danced on the mossy ground with the music of the harebells who rung out their merriest peal in honor of the night. Under the shade of a wild rose sat the queen and her little maids of honor beside the silvery mushroom where the feast was spread. Now, my friends, she said, to while away the time till the bright moon goes down, let us each tell a tale or relate what we have done or learned this day. I will begin with you, Sunnylock, added she, turning to a lovely little elf, who lay among the fragrant leaves of a primrose. With a gay smile, Sunnylock began her story. As I was painting the bright petals of a bluebell, it told me this tale. The Flower's Lesson There grew a fragrant rose tree where the brook flows, with two little tender buds and one full rose. When the sun went down to his bed in the west, the little buds leaned on the rose mother's breast. While the bright-eyed stars their long watch kept, and the flowers of the valley in their green cradles slept, then silently in odors they communed with each other, the two little buds on the bosom of their mother. O oh, sister, said the little one as she gazed at the sky, I wish that the dew elves, as they wander lightly by, would bring me a star, for they never grow dim, and the father does not need them to burn round him. The shining drops of dew the elves bring each day, and in place in my bosom so soon pass away. But a star would glitter brightly through the long summer hours, and I should be fairer than all my sister flowers. That were better far than the dew drops that fall on the high and the low, and come alike to all. I would be fair and stately with a bright star to shine and give a queenly air to this crimson robe of mine. And she proudly cried, these fireflies shall be my jewels since the star can never come to me. Just then a tiny dewdrop that hung over the dell on the breast of the bud like a soft star fell. But impatiently she flung it away from her leaf and it fell on her mother like a tear of grief while she folded to her breast with a willful pride, a glittering firefly that hung by her side. Heed, said the mother rose, daughter mine, why shouldst thou seek for beauty not thine? The father hath made thee what thou now art, and what he most loveth is a sweet, pure heart. Then why dost thou take with such discontent the loving gift which he to thee hath sent? For the cool, fresh dew will render thee far, more lovely and sweet than the brightest star. They were made for heaven and can never come to shine, like the firefly thou hast in that foolish breast of thine. O oh, my foolish little bud, do listen to thy mother. Care only for true beauty and seek for no other. There will be grief and trouble in that willful little heart. Unfold thy leaves, my daughter, and let the fly depart. But the proud little bud would have her own will and folded the firefly more closely still till the struggling insect tore upon the vest of purple and green that covered her breast. When the sun came up, she saw with grief the blooming of her sister bud leaf by leaf, while she, once as fair and bright as the rest, hung her weary head down on her wounded breast. Bright grew the sunshine and the soft summer air was filled with the music of flowers singing there, but faint grew the little bud with thirst and pain and longed for the cool dew, but now t'was in vain. Then bitterly she wept for her folly and pride, as drooping she stood by her fair sister's side. Then the rose mother leaned the weary little head on her bosom to rest, and tenderly said, Thou hast learned, my little bud, 
that whatever may betide, thou canst win thyself no joy by passion or by pride. The loving Father sends the sunshine and the shower, that thou mayest become a perfect little flower. The sweet dews to feed thee, the soft wind to cheer, and the earth as a pleasant home while thou art dwelling here. Then shallest thou not be grateful for all this kindly care, and strive to keep thyself most innocent and fair? Then seek, my little bosom, to win humility. Be fair without, be pure within, and thou wilt happy be. So when the quiet autumn of thy fragrant life shall come, thou mayest pass away to bloom in the flower spirit's home. Then, from the mother's breast where it still lay hid, into the fading bud the drew drop gently slid. Stronger grew the little form, and happy tears fell as the dew did its silent work and the bud grew well. While the gentle rose leaned with motherly pride o'er the fair little ones that bloomed at her side. Night came again and the fireflies flew, but the bud let them pass and drank of the dew. While the soft stars shone from the still summer heaven on the happy little flower that had learned the lesson given. The music-loving elves clapped their hands as star trickle ceased and the queen placed a flower crown with a gentle smile upon the fairy's head.